Hello, my name is Alice R. Jundi, and I'm a third year pharmacy student here at Wayne State University, Eugene Applebaum College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Today I'll be presenting a retrospective evaluation of the effect of oral N-acetylcysteine on INR during acetaminophen overdose. Oral N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, is a safe and effective antidote for acetaminophen overdose to prevent or mitigate hepatocellular injury. Current literature suggests intravenous NAC may be associated with transient increases in INR. The effect of oral NAC on INR is unknown. This may impact patient treatment course and length of hospital stay, as INR is commonly used in practice to monitor patient response to therapy. Compelling preliminary data regarding the effect of oral NAC on INR may warrant a prospective controlled trial. Our objective is to retrospectively evaluate the effect of oral NAC on INR secondary to a single substance acetaminophen overdose. We hypothesize that orally administered NAC does not cause significant elevation of INR in the setting of acetaminophen overdose. This was a retrospective case review of the Michigan Poison and Drug Information Center database and approved by the Wayne State University Institutional Review Board. We queried single entity acetaminophen overdose cases occurring between January 1, 2016 and December 31, 2020. Michigan Poison Center obtains this information via calls to poison specialists who then chart based on codes from the AAPCC uploaded automatically to the National Poison Data System in real time. Data collection included demographics, oral NAC dose, serum acetaminophen concentration, INR, AST and ALT values, comorbidities, hospital stay duration, and medical outcome. We defined an elevated INR using parameters from clinical practice as greater than or equal to 1.5. Generalized linear mixed models were used to estimate association between INR and oral NAC. Random effects accounted for participants' repeated measures. Post-op analyses were performed. Inclusion criteria was age between 1 and 89 years, documentation of at least one serum acetaminophen concentration, a minimum of two INR values, and at least one ALT-AST within reference range prior to oral NAC administration. Patients were excluded for documented pre-existing coagulopathies, hepatic failure, hepatic transplant, concomitant use of agents affecting coagulation versus INR, such as NSAIDs, aspirin, select vitamins and supplements such as ginkgo biloba, garlic and ginseng, those with chronic alcohol use, and intravenous NAC administration. 96 cases met inclusion criteria. The mean age of patients was 19 years, ranging from 19 to 32 years, and 75% were female. NAC loading and maintenance dose are weight-based dosing. Average length of hospitalization for overdose was two days. 82% of our sample population had a comorbid condition, such as psychiatric and mental health. This table represents lab results by blood draw, numbered corresponding to patients' chronological lab draws, regardless of time in relation to NAC administration or acetaminophen ingestion. Missing values suggest that repeat labs were either not drawn or not recorded. For example, zero participants were missing a first or second INR value, but 66 were missing a third. This is a visual representation of hours since oral NAC administered in relation to INR. Points represent separate INR values for the same patient, connected linearly to show progression. The blue band represents Lois smoothing, a typically weighted regression highlighting the general trend of patients' INR over time. Statistical analysis showed that the age was the only covariant with significant association to INR, with beta at 0.01 and confidence interval negative 0.01 to 0.00. Adjusted models suggest no association between INR and oral NAC maintenance dose. Analysis showed that associations between INR and oral NAC do not vary by time. There is no causal inference of oral NAC on INR in our sample. Limitations include the retrospective design and lack of comparator group, the single center study, inherent poison control limitations such as relying on voluntary or passive reporting or incomplete and inaccurate coding, possible selection bias, small sample size, and inability to confirm patients' chronic medication and supplement usage. Reports of increased INR have been associated with IV NAC, but the mechanism is still unknown. Our sample did not demonstrate an effect of oral NAC on INR. However, study limitations prevent further interpretation. Effect of oral NAC on INR remains inconclusive, warranting a prospective trial with an IV NAC comparator group, focusing on accurate lab draws, measuring the dose-response effect of NAC on INR, and correlating NAC concentrations with effects on INR.